The Charter for Change is an initiative led by both national and international NGOs to practically implement changes to the way the humanitarian system operates that enable more locally led response. The reason why we do this as part of the annual um, meetings is so that we have a joint frame of reference. Uh, what were the issues that have come up? What, were the, what was the progress that the signatories have reported on last year? What are some of the recurring challenges that we are finding difficult to address? The Charter was officially launched at the World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul in May 2016. The Charter for Change brings together 36 international NGOs and 314 local and national organizations who are collectively working to implement eight commitments in the Charter. The commitments focus on issues of partnership, equality, funding recognition and support for local capacity. The aim of Charter for Change is to strengthen more equitable and fair partnerships and let more local and national actors play a more prominent and leading role in humanitarian response to meet needs more effectively. One of the main things that we can work as endorsers in our local community to work with signatory partners who are present in Palestine to work together in translating the commitments into action in our country. The INGOs who are signatories to the Charter for Change have committed themselves to deliver change within their own organizational way of working and in the global humanitarian system. Again, what's really, really important in this at country level is the collaboration between endorsers and signatories, bringing them together, holding conversations, strategizing together on how to move this forward. The 314 national and local NGO endorsers are keen to encourage their INGO partners to implement the commitments in the Charter for Change. Globally, we will be have coordination mechanism to partnership group and several groups of endorsers, and this is what uh, we promote and we encourage. That's why we have you in the room. <laughs> Every year, this increases. It means that you also take all responsibilities when you go back. How will you hold signatories to account at country level? We thought that. It's a good advocacy tool, it's a good tool to push more for our agenda and the agenda of our partners in strengthening local responses to humanitarian needs. We saw that the same values that we share within localization is the same things that Charter for Change also stand for. The Charter for Change initiative was and continues to be instrumental in driving the localization agenda forward. The Charter for Change aligns with the Grand Bargain Agreement that commits some of the world's biggest donors and humanitarian agencies to channel 25% of their total humanitarian funding directly to national and local responders. We've had enough of talking in Geneva at sort of macro level and we need to start conversations in country and that's how we can make a difference. Why are we so keen to have local actors in a more prominent position in the humanitarian system? It's not just because they're local, but it's because they are closer to the people affected by crisis. They understand better the voice and the needs um, and the characteristics of the people affected by crisis. At the Charter for Change annual meeting, the aim is to take stock on progress with the commitments and share good practices between local, national and international NGOs. We want also to increase the engagement of the local and national organization in the global debate. And I think it's a good entry point for engagement also. The beauty of localization does not only lie in transferring funds to local NGOs, but really to shift the power to local NGOs. The kind of progress that we want or love to see in our country is that we have an increased participation of local actors to be able to understand what the charter is all about so that we at a grassroots level are also able to own the Charter for Change within our local context and be able to push for further changes within the humanitarian sector, especially given the context of South Sudan. We all have our different expertise in the field and our own understandings within the field. So the different blend of expertise will be able to actually contribute to a better performance in holistically within the entire system.